my burden, just release it. I don't have to live life on my own. It's overwhelming. Welcome to this episode of the Becoming a Fulfillionaire show. I'm here live with Garen Jones. You said something, I did a bunch of research leading up to this, and you said something about God being your coach in life. Yeah. And putting specific obstacles in your way to yeah. help you grow. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, you got to think look, think about it like this. Say, for instance, you, you've never run a marathon before in your life. You just run 100 meters. And you say, hey, Karen, I would love for you to coach me to run a marathon. My first question, I would ask you, how serious are you? And then I would say, do you want to just finish do you want to compete? Do you want to win? Do you want to win a world record? Depending on how you want to finish, that determines the level of training that I give you. I then become your coach. And I see, I'm a, I love puzzles. I love putting like things and signs and pieces together. And I started noticing this in my own life. So I would say, I want this grand thing in my life and all of a sudden, these series of hard events I would have to overcome. And I was like, why does something bad always happen whenever I say I want to win this big race or I want to do this big thing? I was like, why? Just I'm like, wait a second. Maybe that's a part of my training. So me and my relationship with God, other people call it universe. I say God. I say universe. I say all of them, you know. But it's almost like God becomes my coach and says, okay, this is what you want. Okay, so according to your level of faith, your belief, your prayer, your dream, this is the training I'm gonna give you. So if you want strength, okay, well then I'm gonna give you all the necessary resources for you to overcome certain things so that you can become strong. It's not gonna look like how you want it to look, but it's gonna, be, it's gonna feel how I need you to feel in order for you to know that you now have strength. So I tell people all the time, oh, you got a big dream? Expect challenges, but how you can make it easier, I just say, thank you coach, thank you for making me better, thank you for making me wiser, thank you for making me stronger, and by welcoming challenges with thank you, you overcome them 10 times more, 10 times faster, 10 times greater. And I, I play these little hack games and tricks with my mind, which allows me to be in the game of life and be coached along the process. Mm, so it's all about the perspective. For sure. Yeah. So what challenges are you facing right now that you're saying thank you to? Baby! <laughs> Baby number two! Parenting. Mm. Being a present father while launching a successful two successful businesses, maintaining another successful one, and being a rock solid, rock star husband all at the same time. Mm. So, oh my God. yeah, yeah. So I, I know I have this other big question I'm going to ask you that we talked about before rolling. I have to kind of go into, you said maintaining a successful business. Yeah. So along the journey of like learning about business and talking to all these wonderful people, they always say like, if you're not growing, you're dying. I don't know if I believe that per se, especially in yeah. business. So there's conflicting ideas here that I've learned and you can hold multiple perspectives at once. Absolutely. Of course, one perspective is if you're not growing, you're dying. Another perspective is like rework. Are you familiar with that, that book no. and that idea? He's no. like, you know, I want to have a company that has 20 employees. I want to love those employees and have us be really close and have no turnover over time. Yeah. And just have that be a beautiful business that we can come together, work together, have beautiful lives. And it never has to, to grow exponentially and it never has to die. And we can just be innovating, but really making it a culture, like a family culture of a company. Yeah. Can you talk to me about Yeah, Well, I'll tell you in order to maintain anything in a world that goes up and down, the person that can sustain anything is actually the one that's doing the most growing mm. because everything is designed to go up and down. So what it takes to sustain something, to sustain your breath, to sustain calmness, to sustain tranquility. You win a million dollars, all of a sudden you don't have any more money. But what it took to sustain that is constant growth. So you're actually still growing because that person that can stretch the capacity 
to those depths to sustain happiness while problems and craziness is going on in the world? Oh, let me tell you something. That's where the most growth is happening. So yes, you're still growing. And when I say sustained business, that doesn't mean I'm not growing in parenting or I'm not growing in uh, my mental aspect and things like that. So there's an area in my life that's always constantly growing. And I also did not use the word stuck. So there's sustain and then there's stuck. Mm. That's also perspective. Because mm. somebody was like, oh my God, my business is in the same spot. I just feel stuck. I'm like, yo, I am so grateful that I'm sustaining a great business that is maintained 70, 80, 90, 100,000 dollars a month. I'm not complaining. And then now I can go and do the other things I want to do. Mm. So it's all perspective and how you look at stuck sustaining. Oh man. Okay, so I have one more question that this just keeps leading me down this path. Yeah. When it comes to the sustaining of that business, is there an energetic component to that that you've 100%. noticed? Tell me about that. What do you do? What are the pro tips for maintaining like the energy of that, that flow or that sustaining to happen? I know other people have different uh, protocols. For me, when I'm the happiest, me inside of my own body, when I'm doing the things that I love, my health is on point, uh, my physical health, my spiritual health, my heart health, my mental health, when I just feel like that little five-year-old with the absolute joy and, I, and there's not a care in the world, it seems that every time I'm in that state, I'm not overcompensating in any other area of my life. So now the rest of the world is benefiting from the overflow that I first give to myself rather than they're not benefiting from my lighting or my angles or my insecurity or my overcompensating. See, in those two perspectives, you can make it look, I can, listen, I can make it look a certain way in a world full of unhappy, un, I can be unhappy, make myself look happy in a world full of unhappy people and people like, man, that guy's so happy. Yeah, but inside I'm not and you can't even tell because you're not happy. Hmm. So, when I'm in my authentic state, in absolute joy, which is work that only I can give to myself, and then I'm so overflowed that it starts to spill out into the rest of the world, when I look at business, when I look at my money, when I look at my sex life, when I look at my marriage, my parenting, everything benefits from that. Mm. Or it benefits from my exhaust. And it's a world of a difference. Yeah. And all of that has to do with my energy because energy goes where energy flows. Mm. And based on what you're saying so far, what I'm, what I'm smelling, what you're cooking is perspective is really important in all of this. So yeah. on like a really busy week, I, I know you do this every Sunday with Blair, with your wife, you do this like sit down where you communicate all these Our wonderful things, your love meeting every yeah. Sunday. Right. And I remember you mentioning on a different show that sometimes the weeks are really busy, right? And you have a lot going on. You're recording your audiobook and all this like music and you're like a very, it's really interesting to see like how like big and like tough your exterior is and how like musical and artful yeah. and like gentle your presence is. It's yeah. really an interesting, fascinating dichotomy to experience here in person. I, I hope they can get it on camera. I'm, I'm sure they can get a little bit of that. What's the perspective that you take on those really busy weeks where you may not have, or maybe you do make time for those things that really make you joyful and like fill up that cup so the overflow is happening? Or what are you doing during those really busy weeks that maybe doesn't take as much time? Like what can we do to get more of that filled up state? It, that for me, it starts in my morning. Mm -hmm. so Tell me about that. The baby wakes up at 6.30, so I know. And that my wife did such an ex extraordinary job at sleep training baby soul. So she goes to sleep at 7.30, wakes up at 6.30 uh, p.m. I mean, 6.30 a.m. So it's like almost 12 hours of sleep without a peep in the night. So I know I have a window from 5 a.m. to 6.30. I could do anything that I want because everybody is asleep. So for me, 
waking up early and tending to myself. Like I don't, it's like when you're driving a car, you're not going to go warm up somebody else's engine. No, you're going to go to your car, turn on your keys. And if you got a sports car, like I do, you can't just get up and drive. Like you literally got to prime the engine. Then you settle into the drive. Well, me priming my soul. It's like nothing is too busy. And it's rare that I've, I'm too busy for that. When I know I have the time. I'm only too busy when I've neglected myself. And anytime I neglect myself, the universe has a strange way of saying, hey, you forgot about you, like showing me 10 extra pounds uh, on the scale. Or all of a sudden I just feel really just like like tired and shaky. I'm like, why do I feel like I'm two steps behind? I'm like, oh, I didn't give to me today. I just got in my car and drove off my my top of the line sports engine engine car called Garen and just drove off into the monotonous of the day. It's not healthy over time. And I, what I've learned, and this is from people that I've actually spoken to, 104 years old, my, 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 I had a neighbor in uh, Santa Monica. The youngest person outside of me was 75 years old. All I did was ask them questions about the longevity of life, the sustainability of life. That's why I'm so mm. big on this word. Mm. And I'm talking to this 104 year old. I said, how come you don't look so old? She's like, old? Age doesn't make you old. It's when you let your life beat you down. That's what makes you old. When you're in relationships, you know you don't want to be in. When you're in jobs, you don't want to be in. You stay in it. That's what makes you old because it weighs on your spirit. And your soul starts to sag. And she was like, that's where wrinkles come from. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. I could show you a picture from when I was 34. I'm almost 43 years old. And you'll see a picture from me last year. And you'll think that the 42-year-old is the 34-year-old. Because after that conversation, I ended up letting go of resentment, letting go of the two men who murdered my father. I, like, I really gave up resenting people because it was weighing on my soul. Mm. So when I, and this to tailor back to your question, when I give up on myself, that doesn't do anything for my soul. And if my soul is the last to, to, to benefit from me, then my daughter pays the price, my other daughter pays the price, my business pays the, pays the price, my marriage pays the price, and is it worth it? No. Hmm. So it's high on my value system to create, no matter where I am, no matter what time it is, time for Garen, and if I don't, everything pays the price. Hmm. Wow, when, what are the staples of time with Garen? What do you mean? Like when you take time for yourself, 5 a.m. to 6.30 a.m., yeah. what are the staples of that? Like what are the things that, let's say you're you're 5 a.m. and you're so tired. For some reason you were yeah. up late, didn't eat correctly. Yeah. So, something's weird, right? What are you like, I must yeah. do these things? Well, it doesn't always happen at 5 a.m., especially when you're, you can do that when you're single. Mm. But then when you're married and you have a kid, you kind of have to, you've got to adjust. And sometimes I sleep in the bed with my wife. Like this morning, I didn't get up at 5 a.m., but I did get, when I did get up, I got up and did something that pertained towards me. I started playing my guitar because it brings me joy. Mm. I started dancing around to my favorite song because it brings me joy. And not only does it bring me joy, it brings little Garen joy. And when little Garen, my inner boy, gets happy, he gets creative, he gets excited, he's got unlimited amount of energy, so staples for me, I always ask, what would make little Garen happy? That in itself, and I remember all the things that made me happy. I love painting, I love singing, I love doing music, just dancing around, flopping around, whether it's clothes or no clothes, whatever. That in itself is enough, but to provide structure Things that are connected to my mental, like I, I start reading and I want to read something new. I want to learn something new. When I learn something new, there's a burst of serotonin just goes poof, like that. And, you know, I'll start doing push ups immediately as soon as I wake up. Sometimes when people wake up, they're like, oh my God. But if you immediately go straight to push ups, 
you will then start training the resistance out of your body because you're meeting it with another force that you're willingly doing. So it's so hard to get up. Okay, so you go to push-ups and then you start training resistance. All of a sudden, you start doubling your brain power in those moments where you start doing push-ups. Activate the serotonin, you lower your, your cortisol levels because it's the cortisol that's like swimming around you as soon as you wake up. Okay, get up, do push-ups for 20 minutes and watch what happens. I guarantee you, you will not not have en en energy. Mm. So work out working on my mind, working on something that has to do with my soul. So I'll start meditating or I'll do a prayer, do some kind of chant or affirmations in the mirror. And little Garen, make little, little Garen, Garen happy. Make little Garen happy. Like what, so you know, you got the, the saying is like, what would God do? What would Jesus do? What would the, it's like, man, what would little Garen do in this moment? Mm. Because little Garen has a partnership with God. Listen, I'm j I just gave you a crazy nugget you're not going to learn in school. When you activate the kid power, I call it artist power. You're working in co-creation with everything that has formed nature, in my opinion. But don't take my word for it. I just kind of created a lot of things rapidly fast. But I didn't know that until I connected the dots looking backwards. I was like, oh, you know what? Every single time I tapped into little Garen and let him lead the way, seems like he was always, there was something else present and not just this adult just kind of just doing things. There was always something else present and that's the power of co-creation. Hmm. So when there is something really tough for you in life, like uh, something happens, like a family member dies or someone gets really sick and there's like authentic suffering that's yeah. happening inside of you. Do you have a practice for that or moving yeah. those emotions? What does that look like? I lay on the ground. Mm -hmm. Other people have different, um, uh, different practices for me. Anytime I'm processing anything, I just lay on the ground, maybe fall asleep or something. And I wake up 20, 30 minutes later, all of a sudden, whatever was inside of me leaves. I'll listen to The Power by Rhonda Byrnes. There's the, the way the music is in the background. I won't even listen to, to, to memory. It's just it. Whatever is whatever my channel, there's something in my divine channel that's connected to the message in The Power and the music. Every time I listen to it, it's an anchor. It's like, boom. And I just release. So I have healthy outlets. Some people choose drugs and alcohol or whatever that, whatever it is that they do, shopping, but they spend money they don't have. Um, my healthy outlet is listening to the power, uh, laying on the ground, or I'll go swimming, or I'll go running. And then we go back to little Garen. I used to love running and it brought me the most joy. My mother told me, she goes, I always knew you were going to be a runner. I said, why? She said, most people, most little kids learn how to walk at like 11 and a half months. She said, I knew there was something special about your running because you started walking at six months, which was weird because you were so small, but you were running at six and a half months, full blown. I have a daughter that's six months right now. She's barely crawling. So she said, I always knew there was something special about you and running. And every time you were running, you were always the most happy. Hmm. So anytime I'm feeling, I'm trying to move energy, I'll either go running. So just imagine when I had the calf rupture that you were supporting with and I couldn't run. Hmm. So just imagine that that was my happy. So uh, I have these little healthy outlets where I can do that and it takes my body into homeostasis and allows me to be like, welcome home, I'm back. Mm -hmm. So we talked about this a little bit before recording and I've heard like the backstory, been to prison, your dad was murdered when you were 12 because he was drug dealing and, and some people got upset, right? You were into juvie, uh, you've lived out of a storage unit, uh, in your car, you've traveled the world speaking, 65 countries or more at this point. 
you now are sustaining like an incredible business, building two new businesses, Empowered Brotherhood, and I'm presuming the second one is your coaching business. We don't have mm-hmm. to get into that yet. Yeah. And I know a lot about your history. I don't know a lot about you now. And I'm very curious to like, who are you now? Because we're sitting here and you can kind of see a little bit, not much, but in this insanely beautiful home Mm -hmm. in South Austin, Texas, you have a pickleball court and a full size (laughs) basketball court down here Mm -hmm. with like fences and everything. You've got a pool that could fit 70 people most likely. Yeah. And it uh, probably, what is this, four acres? It's actually two. It's only two acres. Yeah. It looks massive. Yeah. A lot of acreage. You've got your dream G-Wagon, right? Mm-hmm. Who are you? Wait, am I in James Bond's house? Like, what's going on? No, it, it, if, I, if I could answer that question in a way that... So I'm going to answer that in two ways. The first way I'm going to answer who am I is in the, just like a higher level. I'm energy in motion. Like the essence of life is growth. So I'm following the pi- the pathway of life and I'm a, this meat suit housed by energy in motion, constantly evolving. And I, I never not want to evolve. I love, I love watching the nature of trees and they grow, they, they, they put their roots down as far as possible, put their limbs up as high as possible. Birds fly as high as possible, as far as possible. Humans, oh, I don't feel like waking up today. I don't want to be that. I want to follow the patterns of nature. Why not be your fullest expression? So that's one answer. The next answer, I am a powerful force of love and freedom inspiring greatness within myself and others. You open the box a million times, you'll get that answer a million times. So everything that I do comes from that place. A powerful force of love and freedom inspiring greatness within myself and others. Whether it's my book, whether it's speaking on panels, podcasts, TV shows, radio shows, doing things in movies, traveling the world, speaking, no matter what it is, the root of all of that is a powerful force of love and freedom inspiring greatness within myself and others. That's who I am. So I answered it in two ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll tell you, because I knew you were about to ask a question. (laughs) Like I told you, I love to put together puzzle pieces. And what I learned was, you don't get paid for time. You get paid for the value that you add to the time that you have allotted to you. So if I'm a powerful force of love and freedom, inspiring greatness within myself and others, and I start impacting millions of people with the same allotted time, it seems as though all of the necessary resources come to those who have an outlook on adding value to the planet or to humans and have a structured way of doing it. So if I need to speak on a platform or if I'm given the opportunity to speak on a platform uh, for 55,000 people, get paid for that, but then the value that I add is 10 times greater, it would make a lot of sense that the seed that was planted That night, maybe during the next season, something else comes in my way that brings me probably 10 times the value. It's kind of like a farmer. Plants the seed, comes back next seed. Well, there's things that's happening through the process, but next season, all of a sudden, there's a whole field of, of tulips or a whole field of corn or rice or things like that. I know the seeds that I'm planting and I know how to add value to it, and I know how to take that value and give it to people. The bigger the message, the bl- bigger the platform, bigger the outcome. I do not deviate from that formula. You mentioned earlier, I think also before recording, that there is this harmony of like masculine and feminine, Yeah, and you really feel, and I think this is what you said, I'm paraphrasing you, that you're really showing up and showing men how to like embrace the softness and embrace that feminine side of themselves as well. Cause the masculine is like, 
maybe a lot easier for you to represent, right? And this feminine side, this artistic, this creative, this musical side of you that I've seen, whether it's like drum circles or whether it's you singing, which, oh my gosh, incredible, right? All of these things, I'm kind of tracing this back to the idea of, so you put out 10 times the value on this panel. Yeah. You're planting that seed. What are the obstacles that you find are common for yourself or for others of this idea of allowing that value to come back to them? And it's trying to come back in many ways, I presume, right? Yeah. And I presume still everyone, right, is blocking that value to come back yeah. to them in some way. What does that look like for you? And, and what do you actively do to open yourself up to, to allow that value to come back to you? Yeah. So, I mean, you have like a three-part question. So you started with the masculine, the feminine, and the softness, uh, and then the value. So I'm going to end with the value. And then I'm going to start with the value and then end with the masculine and feminine. So... Um, <clears throat> When it comes to allowing, most people, I'm not going to say all people, they think that if you plant the seed here, that it's supposed to grow here. Because you're thinking linearly. But if you think in terms of like a writer or a script maker, they don't never do the first scene first. They do the like last scene first, first scene last. And it's kind of like, it's kind of all over the place, but there is a method to the madness. So you plant the seed here and you're waiting, you're waiting, waiting. You're like, man, but I did all this, but you don't even realize that your aunt that was in the hospital that was about to die and she had no sign of living, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they said, wow, it's a miracle. She's going to live. You don't even realize while you're focusing on here that the seed actually started growing here. So because I love puzzles I start looking at certain things I'm like hold on wait a second so let me actually look at the grand scheme of my life and not see oh I plant the seed here I plant the seed here well what I'm showing is an act of impatience instead of I'm planting the seed here and what I'm gonna do is put a lot of faith and a lot of belief and learn more about it and I'm gonna I'm, I'm going to just like add value in that area. I'm going to keep learning. I'm going to keep adding value. The value that you're adding and the thing that you're learning is no different than a farmer planting a seed and then coming back to see if there's any weeds and then adding some more feed to make sure that the environment is favorable for growth. Now, and that's the faith and belief that you have in yourself and the process that you're doing. So if you lack impatience in anything that you create, you're creating an unfavorable environment. And whatever you plant, if it is planted in an unfavorable environment, weeds start to grow up. Weeds start to sprout. And you're like, why is it, why is, it was supposed to be green. Why is it brown? Because it's an unfavorable environment. You think about, uh, you, you think about a, a, a mother who's having a baby. She has this baby. All of a sudden, she's slamming alcohol, taking down drugs, creating an unfavorable environment for the seed to grow in. You think the child that comes out has a 100% chance to be a healthy baby? No, because it's an unfavorable environment. But you think about the mother who's meditating, eating healthy, and the, the relationship is kind and favorable between mom and dad, and that seed is just taking all the frequencies and energy and the vibration. There's a favorable environment, so it has a better chance. Uh, there's no guarantees, but it has a better chance at having the, uh, of the baby being healthy. Mm. Whoever wrote the laws wrote the laws down the line for everything. So planting a seed, planting a seed inside the mom, planting a seed inside of your goals and everything. It's the same formula. So if you're calling in something, but you're like, why isn't it happening? You're being negative to people and you're backstabbing people and gossiping. You're creating an unhealthy environment inside of yourself who wants this healthy goal. They don't coincide with one another. So for me, is taking a bird's eye view to my life, it was like, where am I treating somebody like crap to the point where this thing is not growing? Let me look at other areas in my life. Mm. Oh, okay. It's not growing 
because my relationship with my first daughter, I haven't pursued that. Then I pursue that, all of a sudden, the seed then takes a different kind of growth because everything is connected. And how you do anything is how you do everything. So when you take a grand scheme, grand scope, bird's eye view look at your life, you will see clearly where either this growth is happening somewhere else in your life or this growth is not happening somewhere else in your life. And if you can look at your whole life, you can see, you're like, wait a second, I've actually been successful all this year even though this didn't grow because I got a relationship with my wife, I got a relationship with this thing, I got this opportunity here, I mended this relationship with my friend, this thing, other thing happened, but I didn't take a, the time to look at myself. So because I didn't take the time to look at myself, why would something else be added to the table? Now I'm taking the time to acknowledge and recognize myself, so now the space and capacity is open for something else. So that was the first response. Right. And so to, yeah. to summarize in my words, yeah. and just it's such a beautiful picture that I'm painting in my head based on what you're saying is like yeah. almost looking at just life as like a small garden plot. Yeah. And every plant or everything I've planted is just an aspect of my life. And so on one hand, you're saying pay attention to everything that you're planting and what you're, what you're putting in the soil and what you're putting around it on the entire garden. Yes. And at the really same quick, time, because yeah. what you plant here could grow over here. A hundred percent. Right. Yeah. And so it's like, be aware that everything is affecting everything. So if there's anything in your garden that you're putting weird stuff into, that's going to affect all the stuff that you want good things to come yeah, out Because all the roots are connected underneath. Mm -hmm. And when you're looking to harvest, it could come anywhere yeah. in that. So just have that perspective of like plant do the do the due diligence and then step back and see where the harvest comes yeah. and be taking care of weeds and whatever in the entire spectrum of life. Yeah. I love so don't, it. Yeah, so don't step back and do nothing. It's step back and maintain the garden of your life. Mm -hmm. Not the garden in this one specific area because what's that really about? No. The garden of your life. Mm -hmm. This is when I need a freaking copy person. <laughs> <laughs> we got this. It's all yeah. recorded. Okay, cool. And so, then the masculine yeah, feminine. So the masculine yeah. feminine, for me, I was raised by all women. And I grew up listening and hearing the questions and feeling emotion. My favorite uncle was gay, Uncle Dwayne, who died when I was a little kid. But he was like really colorful. I mean, before I even knew what gay was, he was really colorful and he was very expressive. And I loved that about him. So I started dancing and being expressive and and twirling around, I was like, I really was taking from my environment and I just loved being expressive. And then I was around my three girl cousins and they would sing all the time and I would be wanted to be a part of their little group singing certain songs, lean on me and everything. And so my domestication was very feminine-esque. My dad wasn't around. And my dad was also an alcoholic, drug dealer and everything. So when he wasn't around, he wasn't 100% um, uh, present to my knowledge. Um, maybe as a baby, but I wasn't conscious at that time. And so as I started becoming more and more aware, I don't think anyone will ever be fully aware but becoming more and more aware as I'm evolving 42 years young now and have gone to prison for two and a half years, lived in my car for two and a half, everything was two and a half years. It took me two and a half years to go from zero to a millionaire. So it's like, if there's a two and a half year like cycle on my life. Two and a half years, to find my soulmate, same thing. Um, and so as all of that started to happen and then I started to experience the toughness of life, that is what groomed my alpha and started like really working on the, the masculine aspect, though I was always very strong, there was this childhood domestication to be free and festive and fun and colorful. And I've always had that my whole life. And a lot of men didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. Now I understand why, because they were grown to be tough men. And even though I was extremely tough, because I ran in the streets, I went in and out of juvenile, it, it was just like weird, but now 
me being around men, what the, the part of me that they accept is the feminine aspect of me that I have fully accepted and embraced, but then I've learned from other really strong men how to cultivate that masculine aspect. But the part of me that they've like, that they don't even realize that they've let in is the woman inside of them that they haven't even accepted a lot of times in, the, in their own mom or their wives or their, or their girlfriend or other women around them. And it, the same is in, I'm like a bridge between men and women. Hmm. It's the same thing that goes for really powerful women. Now get this, because it's said, I don't, be, I don't believe this is true, but this is the way the system was, was designed by unhealthy masculine men from long time ago. It's a man's world. So women have duplicated, a lot of women, not all, have to be able to make it into perceived man's world duplicated a lot of unhealthy masculine men and it's not their nature. It's not in their authentic nature. There's a different kind of power. You should never, as a woman, you should never have to overcompensate for other people to label you as a certain B word just so you can make it in the perceived man's world. I do not agree. I disagree with that. And I think that a woman should be able to be talented and not have to be three times as talented to get the same kind of pay. I think she should get way more pay for the, for, for the amount of value that she adds to the world. Women do not get the credit. They do not get the credit that they deserve. And I think since the beginning of time, that was on purpose because I think men saw like, oh my God, you can, they can give birth and women can do all this stuff, let me find a way to take that power away. Mm. So I think what's happening, there's nature's system and then there's man's system. And I think that man's system has created this iteration uh, that derived from elf, unhealthy, uh, the unhealthy masculine and it's confusing because the system, so you don't change people, you change the system, the system changes people. But there's still a running system that has been set forth since a long time ago, but it goes against nature system. Could I present uh, a theory on this? Yes. So you're familiar with Jordan Peterson? Yes. So the way that I'm translating this in my head and what I've seen in real life is that according to these studies that they reference all the time, 3% of all humans are what are considered psychopaths. And psychopaths essentially use language and actions to dominate others, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I were to put, quote unquote, the unhealthy masculine into a certain category to be like, okay, how do I, how do I translate that or, or recognize that in real time? It would be these 3% of people that fall into that category of psychopaths. It's not necessarily like a, a demeaning thing or like I can't interact with those people. It's just the awareness that the perspective that they're seeing life from is that everything that they do and say is used to get a certain end or a certain means, which again, isn't necessarily a bad thing. Unfortunately, those 3% of people will run essentially the world because they're trying to, they're actively trying to run the world. So what he says is, and these theories explain is that if 3% are actively doing that, there's another 10% or so, and I'm totally misquoting that statistic, that understand these Robert Greene 48 laws of power on how to control people through actions and words, although they're not doing it malevolently or for their own self gain all of the time, right? Yeah. And so I think what you're saying to me is that it's embracing this masculine and feminine is also so like a healthy masculine that someone could bring into themselves is the one that understands how to manipulate others for or with their words and actions although they're not doing it aggressively or malevolently, they're doing it essentially to prevent the other psychopaths who are doing it that way from doing it to other people. So it's almost like a shield. So if there's a side of masculinity that's a sword, there's also a side that's a shield yeah. that can deflect it. And then the feminine is, is really fascinating to me because the very powerful women that I have seen or people like yourself who are very like what seems to be integrated from my perspective and how I see you exist in the world, just attract and it's like the garden analogy they're phenomenal gardeners where they just do such a good job energetically 
at maintaining the system that things just keep coming to them. And you know, there's lots of things that you actively do yeah. for that. And I feel like a lot of that is intuitive and you're just trying to figure out how to put it into words, right? which is a little bit of what we talked about before getting on is you're like, you don't even think that there's something that's really expressed who you are. And I think a big part of that is a lot of you is magic. And I've met quite a few of your type of person where I'm like, there's so much magic there. And it's that, that feminine side of it that you've cultivated. That's so hard to put into words. It's hard to put into words because I look like me. Mm. And that, that's what I was saying. It's, I attract all these really powerful women to like my programs that I put out and they don't realize that the part of me that they're attracted to a lot of times the part of them that they haven't yet accepted, which is the deepest aspect of the feminine. And it goes on the men's side and the woman's side. So I'm the bridge between mm-hmm. both worlds mm-hmm. to teach them how to accept themselves inside of each other because there's masculine and feminine inside of both archetypes. So if I can model in a way so that you can see an example of maybe a way in which you want to be or way, way which you want to show up, it then starts to show you, you're like, oh, this is something, oh, I accept that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start duplicating that, but you don't realize what you're actually duplicating is that part of you that you haven't yet accepted. I've dealt with people that are like, yo, there's just, I don't know, man, I, I respect that guy so much, but I could never be out and I could never just like up and sing just like that. And I'm just like, and I, and I see it on both sides. So ultimately it's not the softness, it's the beingness of accepting all of me, Mm. the masculine and the feminine, the tribe and the other side. That that's the whole yin and yang and it's a fully embodiment. And you, you'll know you're fully embodied, not even to, if you want to sing or dance or, if you know that at any given moment I can do that, you do it with confidence. You, you know you're fully embodied then. You know that there's a lot to work on in your embodiment if somebody's like, hey, sing, and then you freeze up. You can say embodied all day long, but if you're fully embodied, feminine flow and that masculine shows up so evident in your life without you having to freeze up. That's what I'm here to present to humanity and work with, with the men and with the women. Yes. And you mentioned that you're running a retreat yeah. and it's, and it's, it sounds like it's the first time in this iteration, in this yeah. way that you're doing it. Yeah. Like talk to us about that and, and yeah. how that came up and what you're going to do. Okay. And, so yeah. I have, I'm, I'm, I'm running a retreat. Um, so basically I was in a deep, deep meditation. And I was like, what am I here to do? And like, why do I attract certain people? And I'm just trying to figure out if you look at my Instagram, I've probably changed my title 50 times this, I mean, in the last six months. Cause it's like, people don't really, really get me. It's cause I haven't really put out there what I really do. And I said, what am I here to do? And they said, you're here to be the bridge between both worlds. And I was like, so what, what am I, what do you want? What am I called to do? And I, this phrase, awaken the artist within, awaken the artist within just kept coming out. It's like, Garen, look back on all the things that you've been able to do. Look back, look on empowered brotherhood on the things that you bring magic to. When you rile the people up, when you drum, when you dance, when you sing, what about when you worked for uh, Wilhelmina and worked for the, um, the, the, the new faces and worked with all those brand new models without ever training. You could teach them how to be confident in front of the screen. Uh, in front of the screen. You, taught, you taught them how to walk the runway, guys and girls, you, and you did it effortlessly. When you ran a speaker's boot camp, when you did these things, when you, the, you teach people singing lessons and vocal lessons, all, and you've never been taught that. And I was like, you know what, you're right. And so many people come to me, they're like, yo, I don't just, 
I have to force myself to be confident on camera. I don't know how to show up on camera. It's always fake. It, it, it just feels like I'm overcompensating. And I was like, I've never actually put anything out that's the nucleus that's inside of everything else that I do. So now, Awaken the Artist Retreat, uh, the weekend of June 10th, three-day retreat, is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Expect the unexpected, but also expect that by the time you leave out of here, even if you don't want to sing, if somebody asks you to sing, you had the confidence inside of your body while knowing that you're fully embodied that you can go and sing on any stage on any platform at any given moment maybe you're afraid to speak and maybe you don't even want to be a speaker but if somebody said hey can you give this 30 minute presentation in front of bill gates or in front of this person you're like oh my god oh my knowing without a shadow of a doubt that you had full confidence to do it the drop of the heartbeat without preparation that is what to expect. That level, of, that level of embodiment and confidence and what we're gonna work on is what's in the way so that we can get in there, do the deep work, and then have you leaving fully expressive in a way that you've never experienced inside of your own body. They'll be singing, dancing, chanting, letting go, releasing, and the rest, you just gotta check it out. So the landing page will be ready in like today or tomorrow, something like that. And that'll be the weekend of June 10th. Awaken the artist within, yeah. I love it. It's yeah. so amazing. It's I feel like it's so exactly what I've seen in you and exactly what I would like to embody that you do even more yeah. and more and more. And I feel like just having maybe even like a regular, I don't even think that's a one-time sort of retreat. I yeah. feel like being able to just drop into that and then you know of course there's the empowered brotherhood and all those things where you can you can sort of do that but to have a very specific time dedicated to that embodiment yeah and that allowing is just wonderful so what i'm also picking up from what you're saying is that maybe there's this element of the this masculine energy inside of us that kind of chooses what to do when to do it and like sets almost like a schedule or a protocol. Like, let's say you have a goal, right? And you're like, you want to get um, a house twice this size. And to do that, you need to go from 80K per month in income to 160K per month in income for 24 months to get the money saved up that you want to put that down payment on that new beautiful home so that you and Soul and Blair can have like an even greater experience, right? Yeah. And I'm sure these things are ticking in your head all the time regardless, right? Because of that ever growth, ever expansion idea that you mentioned way earlier. And then the feminine side is then once you've set the trajectory, once you've set the map, then it's going back and looking at the garden, right? So yeah. to some extent, maybe that masculine energy in you is like planning the garden and then like doing the work to like make the garden happen. And the feminine is the tending and the, the, care, the keeping the of tending, said garden. The tending, the knowing, the believing, the faith. And it, it's, you know, it, like everything feeds into everything else. Like we need the ants, we need the flies, we need, you're like, oh my God, get out of my way. No, no, we actually need those for the environment. But they're flying and they're doing and they're like, they're going into the dog, the cow, the cow dung. And then all of a sudden, but the, what they're receiving from the cow dung is certain nutrients that they're then putting into the plants. So all of that is feminine flow. And we understand that. And then you encapsulate that. That's magic. That's the magic. You I mean mm. you can just say a practical word. That's the magic. But when you become curious about it, you know, I, I didn't know how it happened before. I was a little kid. I used to lie about everything. I was a pathological liar. You know what? When I'm older, like I just got a modeling contract for Tommy Hilfiger. I was like, I can't get any scars. I'm moving to L I'm moving to Los Angeles. I'm be this millionaire. And I just, all this stuff. And I would say these things, people like, yo, you lie about everything. And what's really funny is everything that I lied about that I made myself to believe like it was actually real came to fruition. So was it a lie or was that the beginning men of the, the beginning stages of understanding how to manifest and create the life that you want 
utilizing the feminine flow magic. Hmm. You just get, you're like, no, I'm not feminine, I'm not, listen, there's feminine inside of you. But if you never honor it, you will spend the rest of your life working and you will work yourself right into the ground. You will work yourself into a heart attack, an ulcer, all kind of bodily things that, that typically happen through mental, mental overcompensating. Hmm. You don't have to do life that way. You don't. People are like, yo, how do you look 30 something? And you're 42. And they're like, man, black don't crack. I was like, well, you tell that to everybody else in my family because maybe they didn't get that same juice. I literally look younger than everyone. I might know something. I'm a little something. I might be aware of something. Mm. And it might be the same thing that this 104 year old lady told me. So I share these things to say that it's okay to be a fully embodied person, not to say it, but to actually live it because your body will thank you for it. And your results don't have to be forced. I'm going to make it happen. You don't need to make it. You can't make the baby come out of the womb. You plant the seed, you be kind to the mom, and then you create a fertile environment. You create a fertile environment, whatever you, whatever, if you plant good seed, you'll grow good feed. Plain and simple. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. You're not saying anything right now. Let me ask you two questions. Yeah. When people fall in love with you and they listen to this, they watch this, what's like the best way that you would recommend they consume more of these messages and the things that you do? Would it be the book would be the first recommendation? Yeah. What would be after that? It's not falling in love with me. It's falling in love with the information that's flowing through me. I just become like a receptor for the information. So whatever you see in me is a reflection of what's inside of you, first and foremost. So I want to tell you all out there, if you're like, oh my God, he's so inspired. I dare you to give yourself that same thing. If you spot it, you got it. So that's first and foremost, I want to share that because it, there's some people that would be geeked and they're like, oh my God, all these people love me. No, 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 it's not me. I'm the channel for the information that's flowing through. You're falling in love with the information and I'm the shell for the information. Now, to find more of that information that is delivered through my container, uh, there's my book. Um, if you go on my website, I, I, you know, I have like certain programs, the Get Unstuck program. Me and my wife, we're doing a relationships, uh, you know, a six week relationship course, but the get on the, the seven week uh, process of extraordinary breakthrough. And that's called Get Unstuck because I've utilized and extracted these seven things any time in my life where I felt stuck and all of a sudden I found myself at the next level and there's that, then if you just go on my website, if you go on my Instagram, garen.jones, you can find that there. My book, Change Your Mindset, Change Your Life, that's online right now. I wrote a very practical book. It is easy to read. The exercises are easy. I did not not write it like super far out there because a lot of people was like, yo, I don't like reading books. So I wrote this for people who don't like reading books. Yep. Put big words in there. And I can attest, yeah. it's amazing. And it's yeah. extremely simple and extremely deep. Like many, many times I was like, I got to reread that page. Yeah. I got to go back and reread that There's page. There's like triple, triple entendres in there. It's so deep. It's like, yeah. So my book. Um, and then also, if you're a man out there, am I looking at you or the camera? Ah, yeah. uh, you pick, you pick. No, listen, there, there. If you're a I'm man here. out there, there's a huge project that I'm working on. Myself, Stefano Cifandos, and Preston Smiles, we co-founded Empowered Brotherhood. And it's a safe space for men to come 
and level up. We're launching our global platform. If you're in Austin or any surrounding areas or you're ever in Austin, you, we do a free workout on Thursdays, Zilker Park um, at 8.30 a.m. This is one of the most exciting things that I'm a part of because it was something that I needed. I'm teaching something that I needed. I never knew how much I needed the healthy masculine men in my life to model something that I didn't have growing up, with this, which is an example of healthy masculine men. Me and my brother have a great relationship now, but I didn't learn how to truly appreciate the other men in my life until I had people like Preston, people like Stephanos, people like Samson in my life to model the kind of man, men that I need in my life. So that project is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful project. So if you're a man and you're needing community, you're looking for culture, you're looking for a way, you think it's a way out, but it's a way back into who you really are in a healthy way and to be seen by another man in a very powerful way. And I have that man look at you and say, you know what, let's go higher. Empoweredbrotherhood.com is a space for each and every person out there and we welcome each and every one of you one of our main slogans is every man is who we are you look online you'll see how the movement has grown like crazy and we're looking and we want so many men to be a part of what we're doing because we know that this is our our ode to the world so that man can experience himself in a completely different way and the world can experience man in a place of empowerment in a completely different way. Mm. And I can attest to that, having been to the Empowered Brotherhood events, that there's there's two like notes I'd want to put for people. Number one is, if you're in like a really tough spot right now and you're kind of scared to show up to something, this is a great space to show up to because you can hide if you want to. If you just want to be present and you want to just show up and like meet some other people, but you're scared to like reveal what you're going through in that moment, it's okay. You can show up, you can just participate. You don't have to like share anything. It's almost like AA in that regard. Like you could, you could just kind of show up and it's going to be healing to just be present. Yeah. And you're going to hear some stories of other people who are ready to pop and are ready to like share. And you'll be like, wow. Okay. They're going through a lot more than you are. Yeah. And then you'll get more and more comfortable. And then whenever it is your time or when you're ready, or sometimes there's one-on-one time with other men, then, then you can really like open up and share and then you'll see you're very accepted and everyone's been through what you're going through no matter what you're going through. Yeah, It's a beautiful environment that you guys have cultivated. And obviously Preston, you, Stephanos, Samson, some yeah. of the most amazing, incredible leaders of men I've ever met. Thank so it's you. a, it's a wonderful that. experience. Thank you. I already feel like, and this is why I was like speechless before, is I- Yeah, because I've never seen you speechless right? before. It's because I feel like I got exactly energetically what I was hoping I would get out of you to cultivate my own life in a new Mm. way. And I'm like, man, that was, I'm good. Like, and I looked at the time and I'm like, wow, that was fast Yeah, for me to get like that. I was like, what is this magic that Garen has? And you just, you dove like right into that. And I'm like, wow, I feel complete. Mm. I feel like now I have about 10 years of homework to go do on cultivating my garden yeah. and setting the map like we were talking about and yep. then cultivating. I'm phenomenal at setting the map. I'm okay at cultivating the garden. I could do a lot better at cultivating the garden and that is now my homework and my mission and I hope everybody else got that same message from it. I do have like one practical question yeah. and you can absolutely just like redirect me if this is going way too hard on a different angle, yeah. which is when you do set a new goal. Can you walk me through like the masculine, like the practical, tactical side of let's say, like what's a goal right now? Some kind of growth or expansion, um, specifically from like a business yeah. or a financial perspective. Like walk me through what that looks like for you. Yeah. So financial, me and my wife, we sat down at, at our weekly love meeting and we were just, we were visioneering. We were vision casting on what we want our lives to look like in the next five years. We we're talking about how much money we want to make individually and the things that we want to be doing. My wife earns upwards half a million dollars a year in her own business. And she came to me one day 
And she said, baby, I don't want to have to do what I did to get where I'm at. It's taxing. I'm tired. She was like, there's so many things I want to do that I'll never be able to do if I'm running my life like this. What she had to do, I didn't have to do. My nervous system is at peace. And she said, baby, with her her shoulders shrugged like that. My, my wife's a very powerful, strong woman. She said, baby, will you take care of me? Oh. Yo, let me tell you something. It's different. It's different when somebody's using somebody for money, which she's not because she can hold the fort on her own. And then we're just like, baby, I'm tired. I'm really tired. I don't want to run my life like this anymore. Will you take care of me? I don't know what it was about those words, but something ignited the fire like it has never, I've never felt it before in my belly. And all of a sudden my expansion just opened up. It's like I could take this for the family and be okay. So I started thinking way out of the box that I was in before. And I was like, you know what? no less than 100 million in the next five years. When I said that, all of a sudden, these opportunities start coming. It's like you say something, then you gotta pay attention for the things that happens or for the challenges that open up. And this goes right back to what we were talking to about when it comes to coach. Okay, if you wanna run this race, this is what I'm gonna give you so that you can be strong enough Mm. So when I said 100 million, Mm. all of a sudden, all these challenges in business, all this Mm -hmm. stuff started happening, but it was happening for my growth. Can we pause her for like five minutes? Um, Cecilia, can I have five minutes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as that popped up as an awareness, you were like, everything opened up. So as soon as it, it popped up as an awareness, that I'm calling in a hundred million in the next five years. Is it possible? Who knows? But that's not going to stop me from putting that out there. This is what I'm casting. And I wrote out a blank check that literally says hundred million dollars and a date that I'm going to like, like I look at it every day in the office, just wrote out a hundred million dollar check. And what I said was, oh my goodness, all these issues and all these problems all these things are starting to happen but I I had already had the awareness that I called upon coach to train me well how else can you be trained if it's not connected to your heart if it's not connected to your heart you wouldn't be able to pay you wouldn't pay attention so I got trained through my marriage I got trained through parenting. I got trained through certain relationships that I know I needed to let go of, certain relationships that I should have been cultivating because I, I was like, wow, I haven't been a good friend to a lot of people. So there's some people I need to have clearing conversations with so I can like really cultivate that. But then I was growing the entire time. Then these new opportunities, these Bitcoin opportunities, these, all these things started happening in the same vein, right after I made the decision that we're gonna we're gonna make a hundred million dollars in the next five years or sooner. So the practical is you set, know something is coming, and if if you set something big, know that something is big is coming to challenge you and test you, but know that it's not happening to you, it's happening for you. Be prepared for it to happen for you and do whatever you've got to do to overcome it because then you become the kind of person that is stretched to the capacity that can hold for that kind of life. All the other stuff is details. I don't like to get caught into the structure of details because I will do anything so that my nervous system feels safe enough to not be overwhelmed with what I asked for. I asked for something. I know something is coming to challenge me, to test me, to cultivate me. 
I better be ready. So when I approach it with, thank you for making me wiser. Thank you for making me better. Thank you for making me stronger. Thank you, coach, because this is the training I asked for. It's so funny that according to my level of growth, things come in to match me in direct proportion to how I see myself. Hmm. They don't match me below. They don't match me higher. When they come in higher, it always resolves into how I see myself. I get all this money, all of a sudden I lose it because I see myself as worth this value. Hmm. So that is the practical thing is be prepared for battle or be prepared for the training of your life according to what you ask for. Yes. How do you delineate with the opportunities that show up? Because there's also the perspective we could equally hold of like your thermostat being set at a certain temperature or financial level. Yep. How do you delineate between opportunities that are busy work and opportunities that are planting the seed for growth and challenge? So check this out. Everything that we say and do has a certain resonant frequency. And you, you, you speak in frequencies. Watch this. What's your name? Skip. What's your last name? Kelly. How tall are you? Five foot seven. Um, what's your mom's name? Beth. What's your dad's name? Mike. Where were you born? Shakopee. If I said anything other than what you said, would that resonate in your soul? Would no, it? no, no, it wouldn't. Why wouldn't it? Well, I have a couple answers to that, but because you, you feel it. Okay. Stop right there. There's a certain resonance because you're so clear that if I said Skype or Mike, that resonance isn't clear. Mm. So there's no need to pay attention to something that does not resonate with your soul, providing you're clear. Right, right. Most people are not clear. Mm. So they pay attention to everything. Mm. When you're not grounded and rooted in clarity, because clarity brings confidence, it doesn't strike the chord. And see, you speak in frequency, I speak in terms of melodies because I'm a singer. And when a note is off key, it throws the whole song off. So if the the, the notes aren't resonating, you can't have a three-part harmony. So, Garen, six foot one, Tony Jones, Sherry and Jones, because I'm clear, you cannot say Gavin. That's Mm -hmm. not my name. Mm -hmm. So when you're clear on what you want and you're clear on who you are, it has a certain resonance to your soul. So if someone comes you, to you with an opportunity that does not resonate with your clarity, mm-hmm. it does the exact same thing as in your soul, your nervous system, as if I called you Mike and you know that's not your name. Mm-hmm. Every single thing that I do is connected to the same ocean which has all the power to feed all the rivers. I'm not focused on the rivers. I'm coming from the deep well of the ocean that I'm very clear. That's how. Wow. What a, what a phenomenal answer. I just, I feel that I can see it. I just, I love that answer so much. I, I don't even know what to say. I'm so excited. I, I hope I can do a part two and seven and 84 at some point with you. Thank you so much for this. And thank you for asking me questions that no one's ever asked me. Oh, I have so many more. Yeah, and you, yeah. I have so much homework that I get to do now yeah. because of everything that you've said where I'm like, wow, okay. It's like you were able to put words to some of these things that I think a lot of us know or I've known over lots of interviews and lots yeah. of time with people that I'm like, so good and like a great student i'm happy to report massive success in the near future with all of these things thank you that's the greatest way to say thank you is to show up and be like yo look what i did with this Mm -hmm. oh my god you got a yacht yo that's so dope (laughs) loan me five dollars yeah yeah yeah. pause and breathe every burden just